It's a game that's lost a lot of its prestige in modern times, but Major League Baseball's annual All-Star Game was once a much anticipated part of the baseball season. It was more than just a midsummer break. Back when the National and American Leagues were still very much separate leagues, who played each other only in the postseason, the All-Star Game was a showcase. It was an opportunity for National League fans, for example, to be able to see the much hyped American League players who otherwise they wouldn't see in their home stadium, and vice versa. And for the players, it was a matter of pride. A chance to show which league was actually the better league. And so today, we have our picks for the top five Phillies performances in the All-Star Game. Welcome to Philadelphia Baseball History. On this channel, we talk about the history of baseball from the A's to the Phillies to the 19th century. And sometimes we talk about contemporary baseball issues. So if you love baseball and if you love Philadelphia, stick around and subscribe to our channel. How do you show your home team pride? With mugs, t-shirts, masks, phone cases, tote bags, and so much more. Check out tpublic.com and search for Philadelphia baseball history. We're gonna start off our list with a pitching performance. Number five, Roy Halladay, 2011. Roy Halladay was a special player. He had dominated both leagues, the American League with the Blue Jays and the National League when he played with the Phillies. He was a fan favorite in both cities, and especially after his 2010 season, when he pitched not only a perfect game in the regular season, but also what was only the second no-hitter in the postseason ever. And his dominance for two teams is one of the reasons why the Hall of Fame, as well as Roy Halladay's family, decided that when he was inducted, his cap would bear no logo in order to respect both fan bases. Halliday was the starter for the National League and he pitched two innings, two stellar innings. For these two innings, Halliday faced the American League's best, Curtis Granderson, as Drupal Cabral, Adrian Gonzalez in the second inning Jose Bautista Josh Hamilton Adrian Beltran Halliday faced six of the American League's best hitters. All six retired. One strikeout, no walks, and no hits. And the National League won that year in a 5-1 victory. It's Halliday's performance in this National League victory in 2011 that earns him the number five spot on our list. Number four, Dick Allen, 1967. It's no secret that at this channel, we revere Dick Allen, and we think that the Hall of Fame slighted him by not inducting him during his lifetime. His hitting strength was legendary. I joke that some of his home runs reached the old Sears building on Roosevelt Boulevard. At any rate, Dick Allen, in his prime, was the most feared hitter in Major League Baseball. And Dick Allen was the starting third baseman for the 1967 All-Star Game. And in the top of the second inning, Dick Allen delivered another monster home run, hitting a long fly ball to deep center field. He fires a breaking pitch, but Allen connects solidly, and there it goes. It's way, way back. It's a home run. A 400-footer that sails into the bleachers in deep right center. Now that pitch was in a perfect spot, low and outside, and it's a tribute to Allen's great strength that he could slam a pitch like that such a tremendous distance. It's the first run of the game. His strength was on display 
for all of baseball to see, and he opened the scoring. It was a critical run. Remember, this was an age in the late 1960s when the pitchers dominated the sport, but Dick Allen didn't back down. And in the sixth inning, Brooks Robinson tied the game up with a home run of his own. The score stood tied and went into extra innings. It wasn't until the National League came to bat in the 15th inning that finally the tie was broken. But for not backing down and for going toe to toe with the best of the American League's pitchers, Dick Allen earns the number four spot on our list. Number three, Bob Boone, 1978. Bob Boone was known for his talent behind home plate. He was one of the greatest catchers in Philly's history. And then he had another 10 year career after he left the Phillies. But Bob Boone, he wasn't known so much for his back. Nonetheless, Booney could have a clutch performance at the plate when the Phils needed it. In the 1980 World Series, for example, Bob Boone delivered a solid offensive performance. In 1978, the All-Star Game stood tied since the third inning, and in the bottom of the eighth inning, the tie was broken by a Goose Gossage wild pitch. But coming to the plate in the eighth, with two men on and nobody out, Bob Boone put the icing on the cake. He hit a single to center field that scored both Dave Concepcion and Dave Winfield. Two batters later, Boone scored on a Davy Lopes single. Boone's two RBIs and one run scored helped put the game away for the National League, who won again that year who were right in the middle of what would turn out to be an 11-year winning streak. And for this reason, Bob Boone lands on the number two spot on our list. Number two, Mike Schmidt, 1981. 1981 was a tough year for baseball fans. It was the year of the strike. And when baseball came back in August of 1981, baseball faced the problem of getting the fans interested in the game again. Mike Schmidt, he was in the middle of an incredible four-year span during his career when he dominated as a hitter. In fact, in 1981, Mike Schmidt hit more home runs in the second half of the season than he did in the first half. But when Schmidt played in the All-Star Game in Cleveland, well, he had some problems defensively. Coming to bat with one man on, Mike Eastler, and one out, Mike Schmidt faced Raleigh Fingers, and he launched a home run that would prove to be the game winner for the National League. And it is this game-winning performance that earns Mike Schmidt the number two spot on our list. So, if Mike Schmidt's game-winning run is number two on our list, I wonder who's got the top spot? Number one, Johnny Callison, 1964. Johnny Callison was a productive and popular right fielder for the Phillies during most of the 1960s. His bat, along with that of Dick Allen, was one of the reasons why the Phillies almost made the World Series in 1964. 1964, of course, was a very special season for the Phillies. From the Rookie of the Year performance from Dick Allen to the perfect game by Jim Bunning, it looked like the Phillies were on top of the world. Well, that was until they had their late season skid where they wound up losing the pennant to the Cardinals. But when the All-Star came occurred, Phillies fans were still on the top of the world. And so it was the bottom of the ninth inning. Orlando Cespeda had knocked in the tying run. Johnny Callison had came in as a pinch hitter in the fifth inning, but he stayed in to play right field for the rest of the game. And he came to bat with two men on and two outs. Callison launched a home run to right field at Shea Stadium that was the walk-off game-winning home run of the 1964 All-Star Game. No other Philly had won an all-star game in such dramatic style. And for this reason, 
Johnny Callison makes number one on our list. So now it's your turn. Did we forget any important all-star moments from the Phillies that you think would have made this list? Let us know in the comments below. Give us a like, tell your friends about us, and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for supporting this channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. If you have any ideas for topics that we can cover in the future, please let us know in the comments below. If you would like to see more of these videos, please consider becoming a patron through Patreon. Again, we'll have a link in the description box below.